accept Cain's offering. Furthermore, not only did he not accept Cain's offering, he did not accept Cain. You see, my brothers and my sisters, we cannot bring God what we want. We must bring what he asked for. Let me say, notice that when God tells you what he wants, it excludes what we want. God does not need nor does he require any help from us. I want to slightly, if I can, this morning, modernize this story. Cain and Abel were raised in a home that called on the name of the Lord. Uh, they knew something about God because their mama and their daddy knew God. So these boys were raised in good home. Raised by two good parents. Both brought an offering to the Lord which represented their life. And I read somewhere in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 that the Bible says we are to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. Whenever a sacrifice is brought before God, it represents our service to God. So when we come to worship, we ought to bring God our best. We ought to sing like we love him. We ought to give like it belongs to him. We ought to commune and to have our minds set on Calvary because he deserves the best. But whenever a sacrifice is brought before God, it represents our service to him. So we are not talking about Abel who served God and brother Cain who did not. Cain wasn't hanging out at the sports arena. Cain wasn't hanging out at the strip joint or club. He wasn't avoiding any possible church attendance. Cain was a good boy. Cain was raised at the club ain't where children of God ought to hang out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't mistake and came with a man who doesn't want anything to do with God. I, I know we paint a negative picture about Cain, but Cain was not a bad boy. Yes, sir. Originally. Yes, sir. Both would presently be considered believers who had communication with God. Both men were diligent in the work. Look at both of these boys. They were diligent in their work to bring an offering to the Lord. In fact, we could safely say Cain worked harder than Abel. Oh, I know I'm right about it. If y'all just help me out, we'll quit here in a few minutes. I'm, I'm telling you, if you look at Cain and Abel, Cain worked harder than Abel. But can I tell you, it's not about how hard you work, it's how willing to obey. I, I, I know a little something about farming and, and I don't, 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 don't know enough about shepherding but, but I know very little about farming and shepherding but I know enough to know that shepherding is work but farming is harder. You know there's some folk that can work but some folk got work that's harder. Why, why, why? You know, with shepherding, you you have the responsibility uh, in the morning and afternoon. You know, when you have sheep, you know, you have morning responsibility. You you have afternoon responsibility. But usually, in the heat of the day, you can rest on a shade tree and, and sip on a cool drink. Farming is more labor intensive. Farming is more labor. You you got to put some effort and some work in it. You got to bend your back. You got to move your arm. I mean, farming is labor intensive. Cain, Cain's offering came by the sweat of his brow, brought forth by toiling against the very ground God had cursed.
immersed himself, Genesis 3, 17 through 19. Cain cleared the ground of rocks, stumps, and other debris. Then he plowed and cultivated the soil. He planted, he watered, fertilized, and protected his crop. He expended a lot of effort to supply an offering. So we must ask, didn't God accept Cain's offering when he knew he worked so hard? I mean, come on, God. Come on now. Lord, you, 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 you know Abel and you know Cain. You know, you know, you know Cain. Cain worked hard, Lord. Yeah, yeah. You folk in the church. Lord, they're working so hard for you, Jesus. So we must ask, why didn't God accept Cain's offering when he knew he worked hard? The answer is found with his parents. In the garden, everything God created had a covering. Oh, I said everything in the garden God created had a covering. Wake up, you sleep ahead and tell your neighbor, covering. Animals have fur. Fish have scales. Birds have. You, 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 you never see a polar bear with a pair of jeans on. It doesn't need additional covering. Adam and Eve were no exception. They did not have physical clothing or covering. Rather, they were crowned with glory. Psalm 8 and verse number 5. The word crown me to circle or surround. They were covered by it. In other words, they were covered by God's glory. The very glory that God places on them was so overwhelming that in their eyes it concealed their physical nakedness. Man, when you're in the presence of God, you don't see nothing of shame. When you're in the presence of God, you don't see nothing ugly. So they did not have a need to cover themselves because they looked glorious to themselves in the eyes of God who was in their hearts already. But something happened. Something happened. Hmm. For, the, for this reason, Scripture says they were both Naked. Genesis 2.25. The man and his wife. Look at this. And they were not. They were not. They were not. They were not. Both were naked and they were not ashamed. They were not ruled by self-consciousness. Rather, they, their lives were before God. Every day they were in the presence of God. There was no need to be ashamed. There was no need to look upon themselves as being ugly or uncovered or undesired. They were surrounded by God's glory. And therefore their body looked glorious to them. But something, something happened. They the thought of wanting clothes mm -hmm. never crossed their mind. Right, right, right. It wasn't necessary. Yeah. Listen to me. All of it changed the moment they disobeyed. One more time. There are consequences to being disobedient. Can I get a little help up in here? Uh, the moment that that changed the moment they disobeyed. Prior to that disobedience, look at this. Their spirit completely dominated. Did y'all hear what I said? As long as they were in God's presence, as long as they listened to God's voice, they were in complete harmony. As long as they stayed in God's presence, as long as they did what God said, obey what God said, they were completely influenced by the Spirit. Oh, and when you are in the Spirit, the Spirit gives life. Mm. Whereas, whereas after what's the flesh would dominate. Before they disobeyed, 
weren't ashamed. They walked around undressed and had no thoughts about putting on any clothes. But the moment they disobeyed, their flesh now dominates where the spirit used to dominate. The first words recorded in scripture after they ate were their eyes. Somebody said, you ugly. You don't look good. You are unattractive. Where in the world did you come from? You need to find that rock you crawled off from under and go back. Can I get a little help up in here? That's when sin. Oh, bless his name. Listen, listen. Right and wrong were not in their mind. 
but in God's hands. I said right and wrong wasn't in their mind, it was in God's hands. Right and wrong were not in their, in their minds, but in God's hands. We are told his work is perfect. All his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustices. Righteousness and upright is he. Deuteronomy 32 and verse number 4. By taking of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, a good and evil. Let me tell you what they did. When they took of the tree, of the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, they found a source of knowledge. Huh? Y'all stay with me now. I said they found a source of knowledge of what was good and evil outside of God. They knew nothing outside of God until they disobeyed. And the Bible says their eyes were open and they knew. That means they have now a source of knowledge about good and evil outside of God. When you get outside of knowing God did, this is what happens. You begin now to reason with God and reason with the enemy against God. Preach to you. Listen, listen. We can identify this as the principle of reasoning. They no longer needed God to govern them. They had a sense of right and wrong within themselves. They had something now they never had before. That was why the question, that was rather why the first question God asked was, after they failed, you know what his first question was? Who told you? Listen, listen, listen. We cannot do They start reasoning. They knew now that they wouldn't take it. They had a source of knowledge outside of God. All the other times God come walking in the cool of the day to commune and to fellowship and to have communication with his image that looks like him. Never did they ever hide themselves from him. Never did they have an experience of asking God questions outside of themselves? They said they were naked. And God said, how you know you're naked? Who told you? Oh, bless it. A lot of us get in trouble right there. We done got some information somewhere and we don't want to tell who. Oh, uh, you ain't got to say nothing because you got we got it from our daddy, Adam. But it also started with Mama Eve. Who told you? And then God start, 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 start getting getting real. God, God asked questions. You know, let me, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But when God, God said, who told you? You and then. Who told you? Well, my wife. told you you were next. Well, my wife gave me this. <clears throat> and then God, God, God got to the wife. The wife said, well, that's sir, that, 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 that. Lame. Lame. I see, this is where a lot of folk get a little angry at Brother Wallace when I, folk come to me and I start saying, who told you that? And then they get angry. Well, see, truth will make you angry right, 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 right. when you don't want to do right yourself. Right, right. So you don't get ugly, angry, and defensive when folk hit you with the truth. Right. Oh, for you said true show. <laughs> and then they'll leave you and say, he just ain't fair. He just ain't right. No. That ain't just in the church. That happens to some of y'all family. Yeah. You know they tell an untruth and you call them on the cop. You say, that is not true. I grew up in that house just like you. You were just downright rebellious. And Papa had to beat the life out you. <laughs> had, daddy not, had daddy not put that whip on you or put that whooping on, on you, ain't no telling where you'd be today. Some folk want to blame everybody. Okay, that's a whole nother sermon. Whole nother sermon. Let me get back to my lesson. I don't even want to leave this thing. Who told you? Genesis 3.11. Whenever God asks a question, 
come here. He's not, he's not looking for information. He already. When God asked who told you, you he was, he's not asking for information. Let me tell you what God does. He's drawing you into what he is communicating. When God asks you a question, he's not asking you so that he can find out. God, God is asking for you to set up some communication. They replace obedience with reasoning. They started they didn't have to reason before because they didn't know. God was all they needed to know because he was good. And who would want to step outside of good and do evil? Somebody who's been listening to another source. And they listening to the source who has a problem with the one who began the source. And if I can get you to go against him, I got you on my side. Yes. Preach here, Wiley. Listen, 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 listen. Yes, sir. He was actually saying, so you have found a source of the sense of right and wrong outside me? God is questioning. God is saying, so, so you have found a source of the sense of right and wrong outside of me? Look what God said. You have obviously eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And here's when they start playing the blame game. Immediately after their disobedience, look at what they did. They did not consult with God. They got a mind of their own now. And one thing about a person who becomes disobedient, they don't care about what God said. I do my own thing. I know I'm right. Because the Bible said immediately after that disobedience, they covered their nakedness with fig leaves. Can I ask you a question? Who told them to cover themselves? That new source of knowledge outside of God tells them now to reason with God when they should have been repenting and telling God, I'm sorry. They not trying to cut this and can't nobody cover your wrong like God. Oh, please take a while. They went out and got some fig leaves. God, God said some fruit leaves and no, you know, she fixed her mini skirt. I mean, all that. They ain't in the Bible, y'all. They ain't in the Bible. In the... Even, but look at this. Even with the covering, they still felt naked and they went in. You don't ever feel clothed when you are disobedient. You never feel covered by God when you live in your own reasoning. Thinking that you can be better, better, taller, stronger than God. Here it is. They didn't consult with God. I'm going to sow my own fig leaf. God come walking. They heard God walking. In the cool of it. And the book said, when you had it, what they, they was all right, what you hiding for? Mm. I can tell you, right here. When the police turn them lights on, when you stand, stand up to get, yes, sir, don't be running, because when you're running, is there something going on wrong? Yeah. 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 Somebody say that. Yeah. 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 Don't be no bullet, amen. Yeah. Yeah. They ain't did nothing wrong, what you hiding for? Yeah. Huh? They already sold fig leaves. Shouldn't have felt ashamed. Not only feel ashamed, now they hide. God come walking. You do know God's gonna come walking. Hello. I don't, I, you might think you're doing good in your disobedience, but let me tell you, God's gonna come walking. And God's gonna come walking in the cool of the we mean cool of the breeze. He's coming at his own time, and when he deals with you, he is mellow. He done thought this thing out. He's not hot-headed, he's not angry, but he's gonna deal with the situation. 
Listen. Mm. So you found a new source. Immediately, they covered the temple. God then questioned, who told you that you were naked? Is that in there? Just read up. Out of their new list found sense of right and wrong. They attempted to do right in their eyes. Yet, and yet still, they felt naked. You see, you know why they felt naked? Because their covering wasn't what God wanted them covered in. Oh, bless his name. That covering was not God's way. And what's so interesting, what was so interesting, they didn't know what to cover themselves in. Because they didn't have the power to cover sin. Only God has the power to cover sin. And, and let me tell you what he did. He demonstrated his acceptable cover. And this explains why God did not accept Cain. He demonstrated his acceptable offering or covering for nakedness by slaying an innocent lamb. That's right. An innocent animal, rather, and, and, and covering Adam and Eve with his skin. You know the reason why he did not accept Cain's offering and he accepted Abel is because Abel had some blood in it. Cain's offering had no blood in it and both of them boys grew up in the house. Their mama and daddy had taught them the acceptable way to come before God and worship. And the only way to come before God and worship is obedience. Yes, God is a spirit. Yes, and they that worship him must worship him. How? In spirit. You got to obey. That's why some folk in the church, they want to come in the kind of way they want to. And we are letting the world influence us as opposed to the word of God and us influencing the world. The world trying to tell us how to run the church. When the word of God has told the men of God and the leader of the church how he wants his church to be ran. I'm just going to take my marbles and go somewhere else. Doesn't change nothing. How mad Adam and Eve got didn't change who God was and what God said. Praise to everyone. Listen, listen, listen. Ooh -wee. That was God's prescribed way. God didn't want the fruit of the ground. Yes, it had a lot of work. But obedience is better. How hard you work here at the grow. If you ain't obeying God's word, your work is in vain. Oh, bless his name. At this point, when God covered Adam and Eve, they were ignorant. Ignorant of what God was looking for. Are y'all still with me? But Cain and Abel were not. Cain and Abel was not because they had been taught by the mother and the father. But you got some kids that have been raised in the same house, been taught the same thing by their parents, but you got one up in there, up in there, up in there. Oh, Always oh, going to do what they want. Why we got to do what daddy said? Because daddy said so. Why we got to do what mama said? Because mama done live longer than you, and this is the way it's supposed to go. She already know what the end is going to be. I don't know how mama don't like this boy coming up in my house. Your mama done seen some boys like that. Matter of fact, she went out with a few of them. She ain't told you yet. <laughs> she just don't like me. It ain't you she don't like. And she really don't have a major problem with the young man. She just knows that boy's going to bring you down. Because you weak in the head. <laughs> See, one thing about parents, they spend some time with their children. They know their children. Can I get a little help up in here? Up in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Them boys knew, but I don't care. I don't care how, how much you raise them in the church and raise them in, 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 in a Christian home. Some of them going to go astray. But what is my job as a parent? Train that child. Bring them up in the nurture and in the admonition.
revelation of the Lord. And when they get grown, they can make their own choices. Cain started out being a good boy. But he wanted to worship God the way he wanted to worship God. And I need to tell you, if you're going to be a pleasing child of God, you got to worship God according to his will and his way. I'm going to do what I want, not in the church. And I've had folk walk right up on me in this church. You run this church. You might have right, I do. That's my job. You don't walk up on President Obama. You run this country. Duh! As long as he's running the right, support the man. If the man of God and the leaders are living right and doing right, support the man. Y'all just don't, y'all just don't know him like I know him. All of us got something up in here, up in here, up in here. Not perfect, no, not one. Bible says there's not a just man on the earth that do it good and seeing not all have. I believe now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh no. Y'all, y'all come look close, come look close. I believe we we checked in the Obama a little bit. We find some stuff. Yeah, we will. Now they don't check quite a bit, but when God don't want you to find out, then he'll put a seal on it. And the Bible said he sealed us. And if he don't want you to know, he won't let nobody break the seal. Can I get y'all to do something? Tell the Lord, seal it. Seal it. Hey. You, you know some stuff you don't want to get out. Tell him one more time, seal it. Seal it. Listen, listen. No, 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 no. Lord, 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 don't, don't let that get out. Whatever you doing, please. <laughs> and when people say, you, you run this church, that's just for way of trying to belittle you and not deal with their problem. Because folk that got issue, they become narcissistic. In other words, they'll turn anything off of them and make it look like you got the problem. But you better know that thing before it gets started. Narcissistic personality. You knock on the door, you know they're in there. You can hear them talking on the phone. You see them two days later, man, I came by your house. Woman, I came by your house. What you doing, spying on me? Why would I? Narcissistic. Was you doing something that you didn't want me to know about? As a matter of fact, I came by to bring you a blessing. Amen. You still got it? Narcissistic. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you see, their parents had taught them the acceptable offering to God. So Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground. It was again an unacceptable offering. He was serving God his own way. We can't do that. He gravitated toward the curse that operates by way of reasoning and draws on the logic of right and wrong rather than from the purity of a childlike obedience as his brother Abel had done. Now, now let me see if I can close this right quick. The scripture tells us by faith, Genesis eleven fourteen, 14, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain through which he obtained witness that he was right or righteous. Listen to this, God testifying of his gift and through it he is, he, uh, is and through it he being dead still speaks. Uh-huh. Let me tell you something about faith and obedience. People be talking about you when you dead and buried. Yes. 
you will be talked about even when you are gone for memorial. Abel been gone a long time. God is still talking about, and God connects Abel with faith. Oh, bless his name. God connects Abel with faith. Once Cain realized his efforts and offering were unacceptable to God. Look at verse, verse 5, Genesis 4. Y'all got just a few more minutes. Listen. Once Cain realized his efforts and offerings were unacceptable to God. Look at verse number 5. The Bible says, but he did not accept Cain and his offering. So Cain became very angry and felt rejected. I think the King James Version says he became very angry and his countenance failed. Can I tell you something? This is classic. This is a classic response of religious people who is confronted with truth. Amen. See, the reason you got to learn how not to get so angry at folks, you got to already know them without them knowing you know them. Because their actions and their behavior already tells you what they're all about. And that's what I've been in prayer on here now. It's not letting folk get under my skin when the Lord already done revealed to me who they really are. I don't know about y'all, but it's been hard for me lately. Because I be wanting to put my flesh in it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Why y'all looking at me like, y'all don't know what Some folk are like a book in your life. You done read it. Okay, let me, let, me, let me stay with my lesson. God in his mercy, and look, look at this. God in his mercy, Chris, attempted to open Cain's eyes by way of questioning him. See, I told you, God already knows the answer when he asks you the question, but he's now trying to get you in a communicating dialogue. He wants you to think about what you're doing. Cyclone been in it? Yes, sir. Last night dishes are still there. Well. And mama says, no, you're not going to no football game. Get in there and get them dishes washed up and get your room clean. And you, you mama come back, honey, why are you looking so despondent? That's not what we say, okay? <laughs> That's really not what we say. And he said, but then you're looking at, you're, you're looking at them in dismay because you can't believe that they've grown up in this house and don't understand that they know the rules ain't changing. Amen. Well, in some of y'all houses, amen. Some of you kids don't know what rules are. You ain't got this. I teach my kids rules. Not in this church. Some of you don't. You ain't got this. Set. I know what I'm talking about. I see them in this church all the time. You 
You say what you want. I'll take care of it at home. If you take care of it at home, it's going to be taken care of here at church. Amen. And that, and that goes for my family and everybody else's family. Amen. Preach to everyone. Go ahead. Why are you angry? Why is your countenance falling? If you do well, will you not be accepted? To do well with God is to obey. Boy, had mama done walked in? Oh, shucky girl. Oh, look at the room. Girl, get my purse. In my case, bring my wallet. Hey, mama gonna send you to the football game? She gonna put some money in your pocket? And if you really did an excellent job, she may give you just a little tip. Kids, inside school, they're telling you. See, the reason you don't get your blessings is because you're so disobedient. You want a blessing when you're disobedient. God says no. That's why our children are so messed up today. We are blessing them when they're disobedient. You do not bless disobedience. Praise Terry Wallace. Some of these kids won't study wearing Jordans and Air Nike and K-Swiss. I dress them down in France. I wore them all. Oh, and we have flown them up in church. Flown them up in front of our family members and friends with the polo on there. Just as rebellious as they could be. If somebody say polo and all that stuff, I'd be saying earned it, earned it. I'll put some on the back of it. Earned it, earned it, earned it. <laughs> Y'all do know what polo stuff costs. Yeah. Just, just a little symbol gonna cost you 50 bucks. Yeah. Stuff ain't worth nothing no how. Yeah. Wash it and it shrinks all up. Yeah. Try them fresh folk don't even like you. Yeah. The Lord warned. If you do well, if you obey, will we not accept you? And look what he says again. The Lord warned, if you do not do well. In other words, if you do not obey and you persist in your reasoning, look at this. He says, sin lies at the door. Look, 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 I, look at this part. And it, its desire is for you. But you should rule it. Look at God talking to him. God is questioning him. God is telling him, if you're going to master obedience, you must learn to obey. It's going to work. If you're going to conquer sin, do what God says. Oh, Lord, once this force What's this for? You see, sin has desire. Look at this. Satan is the force behind disobedience. Huh? What is Satan who came down and said, <laughs> Did God really say? He shall not. Satan got it. Oh, y'all in my prayer zone, in my prayer zone here, I've been asking God to help me recognize the snakes in my garden. Because all of us got some snakes. And y'all do know something about a snake. He hides. But he sees you. That's all I'm saying. God. Because he's substantial now. I mean, he's cunning. He, he's crafty. And he knows how to use words. Satan is the force behind disobedience. Once his force was granted, granted interest had to get through through Adam and Eve. It has become one, it has been, it had one objective. 
when that force, sin was entered, it had one objective, to control or rule everyone and everything. Now let me tell you what Abel did. I'm about through. This is good stuff, y'all. I got part two next Sunday. It's juicy. It's good. It's good. We're going to talk about the other part of disobedience. Because there are some folk think that they can just really reason with God. Can help God out. That's another lesson. Wait, wait, look at this. Look at this. Abel mastered the law of sin and death by faith or obedience to God. In speaking to Cain, in speaking to Cain, rather, God warned, sin, desire is for you. But why, why didn't sin desire Abel? Satan knows who to go after. Satan knows whether or not you are listening to the spirit or whether you are listening to the... Abel mastered mm, sin and death by faith and obedience to God, unlike his mama and dad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But in speaking to Cain, God warned, sin and desire is for you. If you obey me, you will master it. Sin is mastered through obedience. The more you obey, the less you sin. And sin, when it knows that, will not have dominion over you. It will not control you. Now, now let me see if I can close this. God made, the second point God made to Cain was, if you do not do well, do not obey me, sin is crouching at the door. I want y'all to notice one word, that word that says door. You know what that door represents? Y'all women? Y'all still women? Really? Okay. Okay. You did good stuff. Good stuff. The door represents entrance into your life. See, you have a choice to open the door or slam the door shut. Some of us are just praying. God, God told him, sin its desire is to have you. He said, but listen, you should root control it. How do I control sin? Obey. Do what I say. Have faith in me. Know that I will take care of you. But he tells sin, if you don't do well, if you don't obey me, I'm telling you right now, Cain, sin lies at your door. It's sitting that way. Crush it. It's sitting there. It's waiting on you. It's sitting there. He's telling him. Now, what God is giving to Cain is the same thing he gave to his mama and his daddy. He gave him a charge. Priest here, what? God don't want robots. God wants servants. God don't want slaves. God wants servants. Slave served out of duty. Serve and serve out of love. Oh, notice he used the word door. The door represents the entrance into your, into your life. In, in this case, it was an access for sin. Look at this. And demonic powers. Yes, sir. And we're going to talk about that next Sunday. Witchcraft. Mm. Let me tell you what the root of witchcraft is. This is for next Sunday. Rebellion. Anybody that's in satanic or in cults or anything, the root of all of it is rebellion. And then when you become rebellion, rebellious, it leads you down the path. Okay, I'll be there next time. Stay tuned. Listen, I'm about through. I guess God tells us right from the start what opens, uh, uh, what what open it is sin. And what, the, excuse me, God tells us right from the start what opens it is sin and demonic influences and what shuts it. In other words, disobedience opens it, whereas obedience slams it shut. You want a different life today? 
you really want to turn around and live in the spirit, obey God. Obey God. Look at this. What happened with Cain when he disobeyed? Anybody that lives a life of disobedience, they are not happy. People that are obedient people, they are living the life of bliss. Why? Because they live in the spirit. But my bills ain't paid. I just know one of these days. Well, well, well things are getting a little bit behind.